I, so I will say that Adam asked me to share about the Friday night meeting. We're going to start a meeting on Friday nights. Um, I'll give you a little bit of details right now, but if you um, want way. more details, just just call me, text me, email me, whatever you want to do, and I'll be and have any questions you have, I'll be free to uh, to tell you whatever I know. I will let you know that we're going to uh, we've ordered a whole bunch of masks. The masks say hope on the front of them, so uh, you know, so that's kind of nice and cool. And we've got a whole bunch of hands stuffed. And uh, we're going to be doing spacing and and um, so forth. We're going to limit the meeting to 25 people. Um, so you know, first come, first serve. And um, and there's no pressure for anybody to come. Um, you know, there's no pressure from us to anybody that's come. But it's um, oh yes, Linda. That's, that's why I have her here. She's she's so good at helping me with details. The meeting is at the building, at our regular church building on 35 Livingston Street. So I'm just letting you know this Friday night, we're going to start doing that um, for anybody who's interested in doing that. Okay. And like I said, any other questions or something, give me a call or whatever. And I'll be glad to do that. But so anything, anyway, one of the things that um, I really loved it when so much has been shared today, like, like uh, Eric started off saying, he's been doing some drilling through rocks and uh, pounding on those rocks with these uh, drill bits. And um, it's funny because the scripture has come to me several times this week. Um, and I've heard it from other people because of the things they're going through is, is, is from Proverbs 27, 17. It says, iron sharpens iron. And, um, and um, you know, we, we look at that and say, yeah, that's pretty cool. But I want to just point out a couple of things about that that's really interesting because when I, when I first read that, I go, iron sharpens iron. I'm like, does it? Because if you use it the way it's not meant to sharpen, you can actually dull other iron. It depends on how you apply yourself to the your piece of iron to the other iron. It depends on how it's applied and how it's taken. Um, and it um, it and of course that scripture refers to person to person that we sharpen one another. So there's three things I'm just going to throw at you for that. And and number one first is it doesn't have to sharpen. It doesn't necessarily sharpen. If you do it at a 90 degree angle, which is exact, you know, opposite, um, which means you don't listen to the person, you don't heed what they say, what, they, uh, what they're saying to you. You just want your ears tickled. You're not hearing the things that you wanna hear. Um, you don't necessarily have to get sharpened. You can actually get dulled. You can actually walk away from it. You can actually say, forget it, I'm out of here. Number two is that Iron sharpens iron, yes it can, but there are some things that actually sharpens iron easier even back then, which was a whetstone. It sharpens it better and it sharpens it faster. So what is that referring to? Well, in my mind, I felt like the Lord told me that a whetstone would be as if you went to a professional sharpener. You went to somebody who's a professional, maybe a therapist or a counselor, and they gave you some really good instructions. You're like, wow, that's really good. In a very short amount of time, they teach you things that you might have taken years for you to understand. But the information's faster, but it's not learned by practice. It's only in your head. It's only something you've heard. Romans 12, um, verse 2, chapter 12, verse 2, says that we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And just hearing something doesn't renew our mind. We have to put it into practice. So number three of this scripture, iron can sharpen iron. It is slower, but it benefits both people if they work it to make it sharpen them. It helps it to sink in. Sometimes we have to learn things the hard way. We once had a we once went to Disney World when, when, when a long time ago, maybe 30 years ago, 35 years ago. We only had two children at the time. I really reminded my children, make sure you stay close by me. Don't get separated from me. And sure enough, um, one of them didn't really listen to me very good. And um, I told her I was going to go look at something. She had both kids. And next thing you know, we lost Ryan. He's, he's lost. And uh, he didn't stay close. And he learned it the hard way. And he like, from then on, it was hard to get him away from me. More than, you know, there was no spacing after that. He learned how to stay, stay close. We didn't have cell phones back then. There was no safe way out of this. And he learned the hard way. It was really good. So just remember that when iron sharpens iron, it's, it's just because you are rubbing each other doesn't make you sharper. So it's a nice principle, but how are you going to apply it? After I get done talking, there's going to be a short video on a cruise ship, um, and you'll understand later why that's there. But the cruise ship, if anybody's ever been on one, is completely about reaping what you've already sown. 
you throw them thousands of dollars that you work for and you throw it to them and for a week on that cruise ship, you're sitting back and everything is done for you. You are reaping. You're not doing any work. You don't have to do anything. They take care of your room, food, everything. It's wonderful. But in problem with doing that is that when we are strictly reaping, we are a really key danger in personal relationships with one another. Mark talked about encouraging other people, others around us. It's like serving them. But that's oftentimes not what happens with, with, uh, with relationships. Us men, generally speaking, this is a very general, generalization, we want respect. We want our wives to respect. We want, we want physical relationship. Women oftentimes just want time, just spend some time with me. They often want you know, some, for you to do things for them. They want service. And um, the problem is that if we both come together seeking what we want and not what the other one wants, then there's this hydrogen bomb that goes off. There's an explosion that takes place. I chose the hydrogen. I love that um, thing because hydrogen only has one element, only has one ion, I'm sorry, that circles around it. So it's a very lonely and selfish element, hydrogen. But hydrogen, very interestingly, is linked to a lot of other elements that make them, makes it extremely good. So you link, you link hydrogen with oxygen and you get water and oh my gosh, where would the world be without water today? So it's very, very much tells us that we need to be motivated to help each other. So I'm just gonna finish up with the scripture. It's in Galatians, Galatians 6. You can look it up later if you want. But in Galatians 6 verse two, it says to bear each other's burdens bear each other's burdens. When I get together with Linda, my first thing that I should be doing is what do you need? What do you want? Let me do that for you. And if she's doing the same thing, this is, this is an amazing thing. And yet in verse five, it says, bear your own burdens. So wait a minute, is it contradicting itself? It says, bear each other's burdens, bear your own burdens. You know, people say that marriage is a 50-50 relationship, not according to this scripture, this scripture, it's a hundred to, to nothing. If you're bearing your own burdens and you want to bear their burdens, you're doing a hundred percent. And if they're doing a hundred percent, wow. I hate to be um, unmathematical, but that's a 200% relationship. So that's really, really good. And in verse seven and eight, it said, don't be deceived. You're going to reap what you sow. And if you're on that, if your mindset is on that cruise ship, and you just want to reap all day, all day long and whatever's going on, you just want to reap, reap, reap. Well, you're not sowing anything and eventually your, your ride is going to be um, very bad. In, in verse nine, it says, in due time, you will reap what you're sowing. And so that's really what I have to end with today is that, is that just because you're, you know, you're stuffed into this relationship. And Mark, I, it was a great joke about having a fight with, with uh, Darlene and getting his tooth punched out. I loved it. Uh, I actually thought he was going to tell us about a fight he had with Darlene because uh, I could probably tell you a couple of them that I've had with Linda in the last couple of weeks. And I am slowly, after 47 years, still learning. I'm not going to get sharper unless I let myself get sharpened. So that's all I have to say today. Thanks. Your turn, baby.